In the early 1980s, I was directing the occupational medicine training program at the University of Arizona College of Medicine. And this program was funded with federal funding from the National Institutes for Occupational Safety and Health. We were one, the Arizona Center for Occupational Safety and Health was one of 11 resource centers that was set up under the Carter administration to train professionals to improve their skills and disciplines that addressed occupational and environmental health related concerns. And that's what the centers did, was to train uh, safety and health specialists, industrial hygienists, occupational health nurses, and occupational medicine physicians. And at that time, those of us who were directing the occupational medicine training programs got together quarterly in Washington to discuss whatever issues were relevant. And one of the topics that surfaced early on in our um, discussions was what's going on with the people that we see in our clinics who seem to get ill with exposures to levels of poisons that are minuscule in comparison to what the toxicology literature generally predicts would be required to cause significant symptoms. And all of us were seeing people who had these kinds of complaints. And so we started to brainstorm about what was really going on with these folks and where should we look to find out why this was happening. And one of the concepts that was put forward, I remember uh, Phil Landrigan, who has been a prominent feature in the field of occupational safety and health for several decades now, suggested that we needed to look at the systems in the body that were amplification systems. And there are three of those systems. The nervous system, the immune system, and the endocrine system. All three of those take minuscule inputs, stimuli, and then have major effects. For example, a virus hits you, and then your entire immune system mobilizes armies of cells to fight, to protect you. In terms of the endocrine system, we know that most of our youth, you know, we have very little sexual development, but then parts per trillion concentrations of hormones begin to emerge from different glands, and all of a sudden our entire body habitus changes. It's an amplified response to a minuscule stimulus. And part of our concern in the world of toxicology is that many substances can be endocrine disruptors. So the endocrine system was another. And of course, the nervous system was a central system as well. And what has occurred is that over the years, we have grappled with the problem of how, what is going on with a person who is multiply chemically sensitive and challenged? What is it that causes chronic fatigue? Why do people get fibromyalgia and extreme pain that just goes on in often unpredictable and sometimes untreatable ways? What's going on? And what do these things have in common, if anything? Chronic fatigue, chemical hyperreactivity, and endocrine and immune disruption. After now having spent 40 years looking at patients with this set of questions, I have come to the conclusion that the overarching common feature for all of these patients is hypertoxicity, holding on to organic chemicals in minuscule amounts that accumulate over your lifetime that end up acting as inflammagens, endocrine disruptors, neurotoxins, and have an impact as they enter the system on the pulmonary tree as well.